Hi everybody, this is Brian Koo with another ROK video. And today we're looking at my account, we're doing an account review. We go to war in less than 24 hours, so now is the perfect time to show you all what I'm working with. First and foremost, let's go over my career statistics in Rise of Kingdoms. You can see that I'm currently at 82 million power and my highest power ever was 87 million power. I have 8.4 billion kill points and roughly three times as many of those kill points comes from T5 kills as from T4 kills, which, you know, for the age of my account, 8.4 billion is a respectable kill point amount, but it's not like, uh, it's not necessarily anything to brag about. Uh, I also have 36 million dead troops and worth mentioning that I also do a lot of work on my farms as well. Now, here are the marches that I'm going with in the open field for this KVK. We're going to be going with two cavalry marches in the field. Nevsky Joan, which currently has my best set of gear on, as well as Justinian William. And this is an Alliance Invictus KVK, so we do have a Bastion skills that we can put on commanders. Justinian Williams is going to be my number 5 march, so I decided to not put any support skills on the Justinian William. I have one Archer march, which is Zug and Herman. I've been enjoying this march so far. It's not amazing, but it's, it's quite good. Here's the new march I'm breaking out for this KVK. As a garrison player, I have this Gorgo maxed, and I'm currently working on Luchi. So I am going to run Gorgo Luchi in the field as one of my two infantry marches. And I'm also going to run Guan Scipio in the field. Now, actually, something I forgot to do before the video was check the march speed for these two infantry marches. I just set these up. So Gorgo Luchi is going to be 42 seconds to this flag with tier 5. How fast is the, the Guan Scipio going to be? 35 seconds, a lot faster. If I put tier 5 on him, they would still be faster. Okay, that's interesting. I'm actually going to switch this up. I'm going to make the Gorgo Luchi tier 4 with my good gear. And then I'm going to make the Guan Scipio tier 5 with my good gear. Yeah, because then they'll be about the same speed. Then they will be right about the same speed. And actually, yeah, they're going to be almost exactly the same speed. And that's good. Now, I'm sure you're asking why not just make them both tier 5. And you can see that's because I only have... 480,000 tier 5 infantry. So when I'm using a 50% troop capacity boost, I will just simply not have enough tier 5 for both marches. So that works out fairly well. Um, but as we go into the equipment, I'll, I'll sort of explain why it's not perfect, right? So here's the equipment that I'm working with. My Nevsky right now has my very best gear. Now I am primarily a garrison player. My focus in this game is to be a garrison player, and so normally this equipment would go on the Eleanor. And you can see that this is a very nice set of cavalry gear. It is a seven-piece crit set with crits on both the KVK weapon and the KVK helm. I've begun the awakening process on all of these pieces. I've gotten some of the key pieces like the sword and the Ring of Doom up to tier four. And I'm very close to getting the Ash of the Dawn and the Horn up to Tier 4 as well. Which, when I do get these up to Tier 4, it will give me 1.5% all damage on the Ash of the Dawn and another 3% damage on the Horn to rallied armies and garrisons, which is obviously very important as a garrison player. So I have put a lot of effort into this one cavalry set, and you'll see how that does affect my other marches because I am using a lot of purple gear even after playing this game for almost six years. Now, my second cav set is here. This is the Justinian cav set. Again, full 
uh, legendaries, fully iconic, but no upgrades and no crits on this set. My archer set, I just made this... Um, I just finished the six-piece archer set, which I know that's not meta these days, but I had already made it quite far into the six-piece set before I learned that this was not meta. And, I mean, honestly, this six-piece set is quite good. The 5% the health you get at the end is great. The four-piece set with the 3% skill damage is also great, given how much skill damage Archer Commanders do. So I am pretty happy with this Zoog set here. I think I might actually switch the Mora's Web with a Vengeance on the, uh, on the Zoog. But pretty good set here. My Gorgo does have a very nice infantry set, which again is fully legendary, one crit, and I'm starting to awaken a few of these pieces. You do want to get as many pieces as possible to tier 2 Awaken, because this is just a very good level. This 1% enemy attack ignored is just a really, really good statistic, and I think it's pretty similar on all um, on all uh, pieces of equipment that you get the 1% the uh, enemy ignored attack. And so, listen, the Gorgo's going to do very well, but it's a little unfortunate that I have to go with tier 4 troops in order for her to be the same speed as my other slowest marches. Because the Guan, you know, my second infantry set is just not very good. It's all purples and a blue gatekeeper shield. I might be better off with the S Sakura Fubuki. I'm not really sure. 17% attack or 10.5% health. I actually kind of think the sword is better, in my opinion. So you're getting 17% attack. I think the 17% attack is better. So let me just update this second infantry set right here. So it's a little it's a little unfortunate that I'm going to be using T4 troops on this really really good Gorgo march and tier 4 and tier 5 troops on the not so great Guan march, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And you know, one good thing about having T5 on the Guan is that my infantry wedge set is quite good. Um, I've got three very good inscriptions here, Valiant, Brutal, and Hardy, which all together give me just over 10% of stats. And I have some pretty good stats on the actual armaments as well. This one is actually amazing. This is an amazing armament right here. Almost max rolls in every slot, but no inscription, unfortunately. So these are my Guan armaments, and I have rolled arch formation quite a bit, so you can see that my Gorgo arch formation set is also very good. This is actually probably better than my infantry set. Ward is a really nice skill to reduce damage taken. Uplifting is very good if you stay in battle for a long time, and it boosts normal damage, which is great for Gorgo and Luchi. Cohesive is one of the best inscriptions. And then I have this Smite uh, inscription as well, which is just full value on a Gorgo Luchi March because all they do is normal attack damage. Now on my Zoog, my Archer set is also, you know, pretty good. Not not amazing. This, this set is not amazing. This set could use some work. Um, you know, this, this piece here with the Spirited is not that great. And then the piece down here with the Haste which is 2.5% march speed, a, a below average uh, inscription here, and then also some below average stats on this armament. Um, so you can see that I'm, you know, my armaments are are, are are decent, but you know, not amazing. They get better as we, we roll into the cav. The Nevsky right now is on arch formation. Um, my, my my wedge set is better than the arch formation set, but I will use the wedge set for rallies and for garrisons. So I think I'm just going to keep the arch for, this arch formation set on the Nevsky. It's really, really good. Very good set. Lots of great inscriptions, including Breaker and Cohesive, which are both, you know, S-tier um, regular inscriptions. And also there is a Primed here. Which I think is a really good inscription, actually. It gives you 5% bonus march speed when you have over 50% units remaining, which is most of the time. So this is an inscription that gives 5% march speed, and I just think that's pretty great. I've got another 3% march speed in the on the actual armaments. And so this is just a very good set. Arch Formation is not great on Nevsky Joan, but this is just such a good set that I'm going to use it. 
And then on the uh, Justinian, I guess I can show you my, my best uh, set of armaments, which is my Wedge Cavalry set. I put the Hunter on this, and I put the Focus Fire on this. Requital is not great, and Cohesive will get swapped out for Strategic when I, when I do Garrison work. You can see on the Garrison formation, I have Strategic instead of Cohesive. But this is a very nice set that adds up to over 50% of stats. In the recent armament event um, that was called O oh, Armaments Where Art Thou or whatever it was called, I actually pulled this. Um, you can see that I have not even rolled this thing. It's 10 out of 10 rolls. I pulled this thing straight away and then uh, just uh, very quickly put my Hunter Inscription on this. So this was a great pull. Very, very helpful. And, you know, this one could use a little bit of work. This piece is not great because Cohesive doesn't do a lot in Garrison. And then this Focus Fire piece is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the Focus Fire piece. And we are actually going to reset this and roll this later on in the video. So those are the armaments that I have. I guess I could also show you... Um, so here's my, here's my third cavalry set. Um, this is the XY who's wearing the third cavalry set right now. And... Yeah, this, this will be the set that, that Justinian William uses in the field when I'm using a cavalry garrison with my best stuff. And I do need to fix the cavalry wedge too, but this is this is what it has currently. So those are the armaments. And now let's talk about uh, the city as a whole. You know, first things first, what I need to do here is finish up this training and I actually need to change my civilization, right? Because right now I'm on Germany and while Germany is good, it's not a wartime, um, it's not a wartime civ civilization. Now for most people in this game, they should be running France. I really think France is the best KVK civilization because it gives you 20% healing speed and it also gives you 3% troop health, which is relevant for every single march that you use. So I would love to use France here, but unfortunately, because I am a cavalry rally, because I will be rallying with cavalry to some extent in this KVK, I have to go with Arabia. I mean, if I run more than maybe just two or three rallies, then this 5% damage, this 5% all damage by rallied armies is just very, very much worth it. And so... It's a little painful to not be France, because I don't expect to rally that much. But I just think I have to do it. And you know, when you're in war, it's really hard to change a civilization because you have to have no troops training, no troops healing, and all your marches are in the city. I just never remember to switch civs during actual fighting. So I'm just going to switch to Arabia right now. I, I, I wish I could go France, and this is a close decision, but I would just feel bad if I end up rallying a lot and don't have this 5% all damage. So we're going to go ahead and switch to Arabia here. We're going to be losing a little bit of defense on our T5 cavalry, but we're going to gain a little bit of attack. I think that's fine. It's not good, but it's it's not a big drop off. And yeah, let's uh, let's become Arabian here. Be sure to throw a like on the stream, if, or a like on the video, if you're enjoying this. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That's a great way to support me. Lots more content coming because we have a very, very big war coming up. And there you go. I am Arabian. Doesn't really look that different. Doesn't really look that different. Uh, you know. Anyway. We're all set with Arabia now. We are officially a rally leader in this uh, in this war that's coming up. And so what I want to talk about now is what I'm the the bottlenecks or like the key the key points of my account progression, right? Because basically, I'm very, very close to getting tier four on my Ash of the Dawn, right? Which will give me 1.5% all damage in garrison. And I'm very close on my Horn, which will give me 3% all damage in Garrison. So if I were to max both of these, that would give me another 4.5% all damage every time I'm Garrison Captain. And that is a very, very big deal. 
it can't, you know, some people may think it's weird to focus so much on one set of equipment, but when you are a rally or garrison leader, it just, it ends up um, being a profitable move to do because it's just so consequential, those rallies and those garrisons, because people are taking actual dead troops. So let me show you where I'm at. I'm actually halfway to having the 180,000 season coins, which will, would allow me to buy another Horn of Fury. And I'm pretty close to the Ash of the Dawn as well, because you can get the Ash of the Dawn as the ultimate reward, as the ultimate reward in the Lucerne Scrolls. And so I could spend 14,000 gems and get this Ash of the Dawn right now. And that would give me 1.5% all damage because I do have enough materials to, um, I do have enough materials to actually build it. The way I check how many materials I have is I just go to the uh, Skola's coin and I just view it and just add up how many materials I have. You can see I have 72 materials here. And what has been very useful for me is actually this current event, this Esmeralda's event, because you get a lot of materials in this event. I've got three coins right now, so I'm going to go ahead and spin these and see if I can grab any more uh, material chests. Um, okay, okay, so this is great. I just, got, I just got all of these prizes, and I want to see like what happens now, because I've just collected all three prizes, and it says that you receive all the remaining prizes. And so what am I actually going to receive here? That's it? Oh, so here we go. So am I, going to, am I going to get everything now? Holy smokes. Okay, so I got all of that stuff. I got four legendary materials, 45 days of speed ups, and six legendary weapon fragments. Okay, so this is an interesting decision now. Huh. Oh, and so I get this as well, because I was going to have to buy a bundle tomorrow. Because what what's in these two chests are a lot of legendary materials. There's six legendary materials in this, and I thought I was going to have to buy a $20 bundle tomorrow to get this 90, to get this 90 spot. But it looks like I just got it for free since I landed on that three-day speed up. So this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. And there we go. I just pulled over 20 legendary materials. You just saw me get over 20 legendary materials from, you know, obviously I put some money and some gems into this event already, but I just spun three coins and got over 20 legendary materials. So that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. It's, it's letting me exchange my remaining coins, but I have no coins left. I have no coins left. Yeah, so this, this event was a great... It had great timing for me because I was able to... You know, now I'm going to have enough, I'm going to have enough materials to build this horn as soon as I get it. I'll be able to, up, I'll be able to awaken the horn as soon as I get the blueprints. And maybe with those gems I just saved or the money I just saved, maybe I'll go ahead and buy the Lucerne Scrolls and upgrade the Ash of the Dawn right now. Um, am I saving anything else? Is there anything else I can get in here? Yeah, I'm going to wait just a little while and make some courier purchases and get one more level in this. And then I will purchase... I just, I'm going to save the gems. You know what I mean? I'm going to save the gems. But that is, that is really, really good. Because now I don't have to use gems to buy any more materials. You can see that this week I actually bought out the blue and purple material chest because I just felt like I was behind on being able to get everything done. But now I'm ahead of schedule... And that means I can save my gems for the next wheel. Because the other thing I'm working on is Luchi. I have not maxed Luchi. I can get him. I can now get him to 5553. And so I am 180 gold heads away, or 160 gold heads away from being able to max Luchi. His expertise is very, very good with the chance to land to launch an extra combo attack. And you get rage from it. So that's going to be great. You know, I, again, I'm cutting it close on a bunch of things. I will be able to max the Luchi before the Zone 6 is open on September 3rd. And I will also be able to finish the 
awakening of the Horn of Fury before things finish on, or before things start on September 3rd. So I really like these decision points you, you make in this game where it's like, if I had put less effort into getting gold heads, um, a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago, I actually won. Let's see if I ha still have it here. I probably do. Um, oh, there's been so many. Um, there's been so many events or so many notifications. Anyway, I, I came in second in that deadly dash, that deadly dash event, which gave me 15, which gave me 15 gold heads, right? And I also do things like, I do things like Champions of Olympia every week. I do Ark of Osiris every week. I've really been grinding gold heads as much as I can for several months now. Although to be honest, I am going to miss one day of the recharge rewards. And so I, I just barely, I'm going to just barely get this Luchi maxed in time. I've been really grinding hard in general. I've been grinding hard on materials as well. And so I'm going to barely get the Horn of Fury done in time. And I like those moments of inflection where you get stuff done right on the eve of war. And that gives you a better account and gives your team a better account. Now you can see I have like about four to five billion resource of each resource. Between my bags and my farms, I have, I would say, roughly 10 billion of each resource, maybe a little bit less gold, but I have about 10 billion of each resource, which, which is very good and should be enough for me in this KVK. I'm not going to show you my speed ups. I, I just don't want to give that information away to my to the enemy. Um, I was watching Apocalypse Gaming's uh, account review yesterday, and he, he showed that he had over 2,000 days of speed ups. And I just thought to myself, you know, holy smokes, how did he get so many speed ups so quickly? Because I know that Apo had a very tough KVK a few months ago, as did I. And so he does have a bigger account than me. He may spend more money and he certainly gets more gold chests every day. But I think that if I were to show you how many speed ups I have, it would give our enemies some information about how many speed ups my teammates have as well. Because I think that, that kingdoms tend to regain speedups at a similar pace because a lot of the speedups you get comes from gold chests and doing barbarian forts. So I'll just say that I have the most speedups that I've ever had going into a war, but I still feel like I don't have enough. You know, it's, it's one of those things where we have a very, very tough opponent here. And so it just does, it feels like I have enough resources and I have plenty of speed ups, but it, it still doesn't feel like I have quite enough. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the uh, everything to show you. I mean, I'm working, I'm working, I'm getting going along on my crystal tech. I have not bought mountain warfare yet. I do have 1.9 million uh, crystals. I have a bunch of these Kahar bone whistles. So, you know, the, the crystal tech is going fine. I've done the bastions very well. I'm 121st in honor, so I have been chaining barbs and stuff like that. Our, our opponents have actually like really pushed honor. It looks like they have some of their players, their whales, are you know five marching honor in order to have a little bit of extra tech for this war tomorrow. And that may be a very good idea. I'm not sure. I do have enough AP where if I want to later tonight after Mountain Warfare, I can... Um, I can do some five some five marching of barbs if I need to to just like push one final tech across the finish line. Um, the only other thing we were gonna do actually is we are gonna buff we are gonna reset this focus fire uh, inscription. You know I, I just think that I think I'm gonna end up using wedge in garrison, and you just get value. You just get a lot of value from buffing the stats of your garrison captain. So I don't have a ton of rerolls, but I am going to reset this thing. And let's see if we can get anything. I'm going to keep the 3% cav defense. I know it's not a max roll, but I just think it's good enough. I think 3% defense is good enough here. I'm going to roll the all damage because I think we can do better here. Um, and let's see how we do here. 
I, 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 I rolled this thing earlier. I actually transmuted, I re reset this thing the other day and literally got almost nothing on it. So yeah, I'm kind of due for a good roll here. Wait, oh, I, oh my gosh, I almost replaced. I almost replaced. Holy smokes. Okay. Nope. We just need one good roll here. One good roll that we can lock. Man. Okay. Okay, that's better. That's an improvement for sure. That's definitely an improvement. Because this all damage is worth about 2.5% of stats. And this is 4.4% of stats at least. And it's a lot of health. So that's a nice little upgrade. We are definitely going to replace this. And... Okay, that's what we wanted to do. That is exactly what we wanted to do on this piece. That is a nice little upgrade. In the future, I think I would probably lock the health. But this is the kind of thing where, in my opinion, you don't... You don't really keep rolling this, right? You don't waste... Or not waste. You don't use more... Um, in, um, transmutation stones on this. You see that I'm basically out of transmutation stones. I only had one extra roll. And there's just other things that I could roll at this point. Um, here, since we're, since we're just doing this, since it's already a long video and everything, let me see what else I can roll. Um, there are just certain pieces that are hard to roll because you just don't really know what you want. Um, why do I keep having the wrong, here, I keep doing this wrong, I keep having the wrong thing on the, the, uh, the zoo here, but like this boiling blood, it's, it's pretty good, but it's like, do I want this for, um, do I want this for cavalry or do I want this for archers, right? Like what, I, I don't even know what I want to do with this in the long run. So like, I'm just not going to use inscriptions on it now. Cause I just, I don't know which direction I want to go with it. Same thing with, same thing with, um, with this Desperado piece, right? Like, or what, which one is it? Yeah, Desperado. Like I could roll this Desperado. I could try to get a better health roll or a better March speed roll, but I don't know if I'm going to use Arch Formation as a garrison or not. I think I will probably use Wedge most of the time but I also have a good arch formation garrison. And so if I'm getting swarmed a lot, I may want to use arch, but I don't know. So I'm not going to use um, transmutation stones on something like this. What I'm actually going to use the transmutation stones on because I, I'm feeling lucky is I'm going to use it on this hardy, this hardy right here, because this to me is just like obviously an, an infantry armament. It is quite good. Although, I don't even want to use it on this because I don't know how long I'll be using a skill damage infantry commander, actually. So yeah, even even this, even using inscription stones on this, or transmutation stones on this, is a little bit iffy. Because I might only be using wedge formation on infantry for another, like, one or two KVKs. So anyway, we'll, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at, at one successful roll. We'll start building our inscription stones back up. Really nice upgrade to the focus fire here. Very clean, very clean looking wedge formation on my Justinian rally. And yeah, that's that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Um, oh, I'll also show you how many. Um, I have 35. I have 35 50% uh, troop expansions. And the reason I have so many of these is because whenever one of them shows up in the mysterious merchant, at a 70% discount, I always, always, always buy the 50% expansions. And I'll even buy it at a 60% discount some of the time because it's just incredibly good value. And so if you're someone who is watching this and you're sitting there with in your bags looking at like eight of these purple expansions, just realize that in your next war, there's you're going to be fighting at least half the time with a smaller expansion. You're going, to be, you're going to be fighting at least half the time with a 25% expansion. Whereas because I spent, oh, I don't know, maybe 30,000 gems, 35,000 gems to get all of these expansions, I will have a 50% troop boost for the entire war. You know, th there's no way I'm going to go through all these, you know, knock on wood, 
There's no way I'll go through all of these in a single war. So, yeah, I'm feeling good about the war tomorrow. White Castle is giving his analysis in chat right now. 2975 can win, but 248, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't know. We're confident. We're ready. And until next time, I will see you all on the flip side.